the man, the myth, the myth legend, <laughs> Representative Paul Tonko, part of the Engineering Caucus. Yeah. I think the last time I saw you was at the EV event that ESI worked on with CalStart and others, and you killed it, talking about your vision for electrified transportation. We talked about that today. It's always a thrill to see you and to hear what you have to say. So I'll welcome you to the lectern. Let's welcome Representative Paul Tonko. Thank you, sir. It's great to see you. Hey, guys. How are you? Well, EESI, how are you? It's good to join with Dan and the crew. Thank you for the great advocacy. Thank you for transformational efforts that we're all doing together as we respond to this nation and the world with the needs for the environment and certainly with uh, improved energy outcomes and a stronger economy for all of us. So this is a great opportunity to say thank you to so many who have been the voice and the, uh, the passion to make a difference in the halls of government. And certainly it begins here at the federal level. We have to set that tone of a transformational economy, and I think it's happening. Um, you know, it's, it's evident with energy efficiency and clean energy and with renewables, we're making a statement. This is like transformational. It's making certain that we revisit how we produce, how we generate energy, and how we consume it, and using it efficiently as a resource. And so it tells us we're not in some sort of moment where it's far off into the future, but it's in the present now that we have these opportunities. And so it speaks forcefully to all the good work that can be done. Last session in Congress was powerful. I think the work done on the a bipartisan infrastructure bill, certainly on the Chips and Science Act, on the Inflation Reduction Act, not only were they historic amounts of investment made in this transformation, but it was also about etching policy into statute that will allow for tremendous reform and tremendous market adjustment and technological adjustment, which is a powerful statement in and of itself. So for many years, many of us in the state, in the uh, in the House, I'm thinking state days, in the uh, House and in the Senate have been advancing the effort to include clean energy in tax code, and provide a certainty with that. Well, it happened in the RRA, and we're all proud of that fact that we now have that bit of predictability that will undeniably influence market trends and to technological trends. And it also does something else. It makes certain that we're going to provide um, solid, good paying union jobs, and along with that, making certain that we have domestically manufactured components that will get us to where we need to be. Powerful, powerful outcome with that great investment. And then as we go forward, we know that there's more work to be done. Certainly, we're going to grow jobs. We're going to uh, make um, the environment outcome, our stewardship of the environment, all the more effective. And we're certainly going to leverage a lot of private sector investment. So that means a healthier, a richer, a more competitive, robust nation. That is a great outcome that we're all doing through the transformational moments that we've uh, induced here through the efforts of uh, statutory change. But uh, it tells us the work is not done. We have to go forward and make certain that we do that permitting reform so that we can then transmission out all of the efforts that we need to do to get clean energy, renewable energy, to all of the forces out there, to make certain that uh, we're doing this in a bicameral, bipartisan way, introducing everyone into the march so that the victory will be the greatest and the quickest that we can achieve. But it's also reminding one another that there's a stewardship here. There is a mark that we're going to place that really is going to eclipse us from the world of the past and enable us to go forward as we continue to commit not only to the permitting reforms that will provide for the, uh, the grid updates that are required, a modernized grid that will enable us to integrate all of the renewables and uh, innovation that uh, comes with technology, but it's also going to be training the workforce of the future, making certain that uh, we have those qualified, highly skilled, effective workers that will be that human infrastructure that will make the true implementation of these bills, uh, these now laws, into uh, reality. So here's our golden moment. We're going to face the challenges. There are, there are huge challenges, but I'm convinced we're going to conquer them. We're going to do it in a way that has us working as a team, 
as a passionate group that will make certain that uh, the transformation happened and that no community and no worker will be left behind. So that this is incorporating all of us into this tremendous schematic that really is leading to this uh, great moment in en environment and energy history. So to EESI, thank you so much for your participation, for your messaging, Dan, all of the folks. You know, we've had great opportunities to work on things of late. Was it the uh, demonstration of all sorts of heavy duty electric vehicles and a great array of new concepts that can be embraced in the work we do. So great to be a partner with you. I cherish that partnership and we're gonna continue to forcefully move forward and make certain that all of those deniers, all those delayers are going to be the voice of the past that we're moving forward, no stopping us now. Okay, awesome. thanks. Great, thanks for all of your work. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.